Welcome to the BioZoom channel, place where we zoom into secrets of life. In today's episode, as you might have guessed from the title, we'll be exploring the structure and function of DNA. So, what do we know about DNA? Its name comes from deoxyribonucleic acid, which is directly related to its chemistry. Ribose is a 5-carbon sugar, deoxy means it is missing an oxygen atom, and acid refers to its acidic nature. That's where we get the abbreviation DNA. The basic building block of DNA is the nucleotide. It's made up of three parts, a sugar called deoxyribose, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. Now, let's break it down. The sugar, deoxyribose, has five carbon atoms. On carbon number 5, there's a phosphate group attached. This forms a bond called a phosphodiester bond. On carbon number 1, we find one of the four nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, thymine, or cytosine. This connection is called an N-glycosidic bond. And then there's carbon number 3, which is super important. During DNA replication, the next nucleotide is attached exactly at this position, allowing DNA to grow and copy itself accurately. DNA isn't just any molecule, it's right-handed, meaning it twists in a specific direction. And if you were to count how many bases it takes to complete one full turn of the helix, the answer is 10.5 bases. In DNA, we have four types of nucleotides, which differ based on their nitrogenous bases. These are adenine, A, guanine, G, thymine, T, cytosine, C. These bases are responsible for DNA's ability to store and transmit genetic information. This is because A always pairs with T and G only pairs with C. Thanks to this complementary base pairing, DNA can be accurately copied and transcribed, ensuring that genetic information is faithfully passed on from one generation to the next. Let's imagine DNA as the carrier of genetic information that determines how an organism functions. This information is encoded in the sequence of four nitrogenous bases. Their precise order in DNA represents the genetic code, which serves as the foundation for the production of all proteins in the cell. However, DNA is not read one nucleotide at a time, but in triplets called codons. Each codon specifies a particular amino acid, meaning that the DNA sequence directly determines which protein will be synthesized. For example, the codon ATG codes for the amino acid methionine and also serves as the start signal for protein synthesis. On the other hand, some codons function as stop signals, terminating the translation process. In order for the information in DNA to be utilized, it must undergo two key processes. The first is transcription, during which DNA is copied into messenger RNA and mRNA in the cell nucleus. This molecule then carries the information from the nucleus to the ribosomes. The second process is translation, where this information is decoded into a sequence of amino acids, resulting in the formation of a functional protein. Interestingly, the genetic code is nearly universal. Identical codons specify the same amino acids in most organisms, from bacteria to humans. This suggests that all life on Earth shares a common evolutionary origin. Genetic information is crucial because it determines which proteins a cell produces, thereby defining its function. It ensures the stability of hereditary information while also allowing for mutations, which can lead to evolutionary changes or genetic disorders. Additionally, it is regulated by epigenetic mechanisms such as DNA methylation, which can influence gene expression without altering the DNA sequence itself. Simply put, DNA is like the programming code of life. Each gene is a line in this program that dictates which proteins will be produced and how the cell will function. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. We really appreciate it. See you in the next video.